What makes El Greco's assumption a masterpiece? Surely the Italians, leaders in the cult of the Virgin, address the biblical subject of Mary's ascension into heaven in full technicolor glory. In fact, El Greco apparently modeled this painting after one by the Venetian master Titian. This painting once hung behind the high altar in the church of Santo Domingo el Antiguo in Toledo, Spain. You can almost imagine it in the flickering candlelight, helping the faithful meditate on salvation, hope, and redemption. interesting about El Greco is that he wasn't always anywhere near as popular as he is today. Because he was such an idiosyncratic artist, no one really could follow his style, and he fell into almost complete obscurity for close to 300 years. It was only in the late 19th century when a group of collectors and dealers suddenly got interested again in his work. There's something very contemporary even about the struggles that he went through in his career and his personality. We know a lot more about El Greco than we do other artists of the period, thanks to all the records of the trials and lawsuits and everything else. We really have a sense of him as a person and of, of what he wanted for his career, and they're the same basic struggles that anyone who's trying to make it as an artist faces, even though it was 400 years ago. Dolne Nicos Theotokopoulos, 1541-1614, most widely known as El Greco, was a painter, sculptor and architect of the Spanish Renaissance. The nickname El Greco refers both to his Greek origin and Spanish citizenship. El Greco was a 16th century maverick, a curious figure full of contradictions. He was a devout and orthodox Catholic, but a radical artist. He was born a Greek, trained in Italy, but made his name in Spain. His ecstatic, stylized religious images came from a startling imagination rather than from nature. El Greco traveled a unique journey as an artist, and along the way, he had absorbed influences from the post-Byzantine Cretan Renaissance to the mannerism of Michelangelo.